Good morning, students. Today, I will tell you a story. And in that story, you are also a part of it. Now, you have a friend called Jack, who's working in a company. Every day, he comes to your house to play badminton. But off late, he's not coming to your house. So you call him over the phone. He's not attending the calls. So you wonder what's wrong. So the next day, you decide to go to his office. Now, I will take you to Jack's office. So this is Jack, and he's working as the production manager in a company. You enter his office only to see him pondering over a sheet of paper. So in your normal friendly tone, you ask, Hey, bro, what's the problem? He remains silent. He doesn't take his eyes off the paper. After a little while, he replies, I have to manufacture two products. My resources are scarce. I do not have sufficient labor hours and raw materials to manufacture both products. Can't decide on the optimum product mix. So you immediately make a mental note of the problem. One, there is more than one limiting factor. Two, there are two products. And three, you have to find the optimum product mix. Now, in the previous class, you had studied how to find the optimum product mix when there is only one limiting factor, but you do not know how to find out the optimum product mix whenever there is more than one limiting factor. But you remember your teacher telling you that the solution for this is linear programming. Without further delay, you reply. No problem, bro. The solution is linear programming. I will refresh my memory and get back to you tomorrow. And you decide to watch the video on linear programming. Okay, so you heard the story. Now I had a wonderful time recording this video. Just imagining your faces. This was the story? My God. That is the expression that you have presently, right? But let me tell you something. If you help your friend Jack, you're actually helping yourself. The exams are nearing. So shall we get started? So let's get started with linear programming. What exactly is linear programming? Mathematical modeling technique to arrive at the optimum product mix when multiple limiting factors exist. So it is a method to arrive at the optimum product mix. What do you mean by optimum product mix? How much quantity of each product is to be produced? Okay. And that too, which will maximize your profits. For a single limiting factor, we have studied in the previous class. What do we do? We calculate the contribution per hour or contribution per kg of each product and rank the products accordingly. But when multiple limiting factors occurs, we have to adopt linear programming. Now, the multiple limiting factors is also known as constraints. Since this is a mathematical modeling technique, a bit of max is involved. Now, the max that is required for linear programming is something that we have already studied in the school level. But I want you to refresh your memory. The first thing that you have to learn is what is a linear equation in two variables? Though we are doing this in a business scenario, linear equation in two variables is something that is well connected with our everyday life. So instead of going to the business scene, I will give you very simple examples so that you will be able to understand the concepts much better. Now, suppose you are going to the market to buy mangoes and apples. Okay. The price of one mango is 20 rupees and the price of one apple is 25 rupees. Only amount that you have with you is 100 rupees. And that is a maximum amount that you can spend, which means that your limiting factor is the cash that you have or the limiting factor is just 100 rupees. Now, how do we write this in the form of an equation? Now we will assume, okay, let X be the number of mangoes and let Y be the number of apples. So how do you write the equation? The equation will be 20 rupees into the number of mangoes plus 25 rupees into the number of apples should be equal to 100. It cannot exceed 100 because the amount that you have is only 100. So what is the equation that you're going to write? The equation will be 20x plus 25y is equal to 100. What does this mean? It simply means that 20 rupees multiplied by the number of mangoes plus 25 rupees, which is the price of one apple, multiplied by the number of apples 
is equal to 100 rupees. Why is it equal to 100 rupees? Because that is the only amount that you have with you. You don't have an intention to spend the entire 100 rupees. Okay. You can spend an amount less than 100 rupees. It's, so how do you write the equation? We write the equation as 20x plus 25y is less than or equal to 100 which means that we do not want to spend the entire 100 rupees. We can spend an amount less than 100 rupees. That is why the symbol less than or equal to. Now, this is known as the linear inequality. So the other one was an equation where it was the equal sign. And the second one is the linear inequality where you have the less than or equal to sign. And what is this 20x? 20x is nothing but the cost of mangoes. And what is this 25y? 25y is a cost of apples. So the cost of mangoes plus the cost of apples should be less than or equal to 100 rupees. That is the meaning of this linear inequality. The next step is to record the linear equation in a graph paper. So we have the x-axis and the y-axis. And what was x? x was the number of mangoes. So I shall write against the x-axis number of mangoes and against the y-axis number of apples and we will number it. Now linear equation it is always a straight line and in order to draw a straight line how many points are required? Two points right? So how do we find out the two points that satisfies this equation? Pretty easy okay? So I will just copy the linear equation on the right side. So you have the linear equation 20x plus 25y is equal to 100. And what was x? x was the number of mangoes and y was the number of apples. Now suppose, suppose with this entire 100 rupees, you are buying only mangoes, which means that you are not going to buy apples. So what happens? y will be equal to 0 because we are not buying any apples. So y is equal to 0 when we are not buying any apples. So what will the equation be? It will be 20x is equal to 100. So what is x equal to? x is equal to 100 divided by 20, which is equal to 5. So if we are not buying any apples, then the maximum number of mangoes that we can buy with 100 rupees is just 5. So the first point to be plotted is xy where x is equal to 5 and where y is equal to 0. So how do you mark x, y, 5, 0? So x coordinate, we have to mark 5. So along the x axis, we are moving to point 0.5. So this is the point 0.5. And you don't need to represent y because y is already 0. So the point of plot is here. So this one is a point x, y, where x is 5 and where y is 0. Now we need just one more point to draw a line. The very same linear equation I'm copying, 20x plus 25y. And what was x? x is the number of mangoes and y is the number of apples. Now in this case, what we will assume is we are not buying any mangoes. With this entire 100 rupees, we are going to buy only apples. So no mangoes, which means that x will be equal to 0. So when x is equal to 0, what will the equation be? It will be 20 into 0, which means that that goes off. So it is 25y is equal to 100. And what is y? y is equal to 100 by 25 or 4. What does this mean? It means that if we spend the entire 100 rupees on apples, then the maximum number of apples that we can buy is 4. So what is the coordinate or what is the point that we have to plot x, y, where x is 0 and y is 4. So this is what we have just calculated. When x is equal to 0, y is equal to 4. Now, how do you represent this point x, y, where x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 4? Along the x-axis, we don't need to move because x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 4. So we have to move along the y-axis till point 4. So this is the point, okay? So I will plot that point here. 0, 4 is this point where x is equal to 0 and where y is equal to 4. Now, all that we have to do is join those two points to get the line which represents the linear equation 20x plus 25y is equal to 100. Now, what does this line mean? The line means that any point on this line, any point on this line will satisfy this equation. That is the meaning of that line. Okay. So, let's take one point on the line and just let's cross check. Okay. 
So this point, it comes down to 2.5 and it comes to two here. So this point is 2.5 and two, where X is equal to 2.5 and where Y is equal to two. Now let's substitute it in this formula and see whether the amount totals to 100. So how much does it come? 20 into 2.5 plus 25 into 2. Just check whether the amount comes to 100. It comes to 100, right? Which means that any point on this line will satisfy this equation. That is, this is the line where the entire amount of 100 rupees is being spent. Now let's understand the graph further, okay? Now can we buy five apples? No, with 100 rupees, the maximum apples that you can buy is just four. You cannot buy five apples, which means that this is something which cannot be achieved. Can you buy six mangoes? No, the maximum number of mangoes that we can buy is five with an amount of 100 rupees. That's the maximum number. So beyond this, we cannot go and beyond this also, we cannot go. My next question is, can you buy three apples? Yes, that's possible with 100 rupees. Can you buy two mangoes? Yes, that's also possible. So anything that lies below this line is feasible. We can buy. But anything that lies above this line is not feasible. Now, the region below the linear equation is known as the feasible region. So now what, the, what is the conclusion that we can draw? Linear programming for business. Now we will relate it to the business. So what we have just completed is step one. So what should you do? All the limiting factors or constraints. Now, in the business world, usually the questions are for the constraints are labor hours or direct materials. So that's the constraint. In the example that I just said, 100 rupees was a constraint. But in the questions that come for the exam, it is labor hours and the direct materials that is the constraint. And it should be written in the form of a linear equation. And you have to identify the feasible region. So just like we identified the feasible region for mangoes and apples, we have to identify the feasible region when the limiting factor is direct labor hours or the raw materials. With this, we come to an end of today's session. If you have any doubts, please post in the comment box below. And if you've understood the concepts well, please support the channel by clicking the subscribe and the like button. Thank you and have a good day.